We all think a lot about food, don't we? Because we like food. We like certain foods. We really love some foods. And sometimes we wonder about the ingredients in food. You look in a food store and you see the labels and you see sometimes 10 or 20 or 30 different ingredients. There are additives and there are chemicals and there are preservatives. Today, we're in southern Butler County in Valencia at Freedom Farms, and they specialize in one kind of food. It's natural food, it's organic food, it's pure food. We're gonna talk with some of the folks about all of this. So let's go inside and meet some of the folks at Freedom Farms. Joe King is the president of Freedom Farms, and this is a fascinating operation. Have you been in farming all your life? Yes, my whole life. We have a big family, and uh, we're a third generation farm. You're the president, and I know you have brothers and sisters involved with the farm, and a mother as well. So how much of the family works here? Most of them. My one brother's in school to be a doctor, and my other brother's in construction. But there's nine boys and one girl, and we all grew up farming on my parents' farm. And uh, in 2009, me and my brother started Freedom Farms. What's different about Freedom Farms from other farms that you've worked or owned before? Well, as most people will notice, there's not many startup farms in the last 10 years. Um, it's becoming a dying breed and there's less and less people doing it. So um, what we found through three generations of farming is it's not enough um, to be self-employed and do it yourself. We all got together and we're trying to make a run at it all, um, all together and do be way more diversified. We do a lot of things. Diversified, I know one of the diversifications is the store that we're in right now. This is the farmer's market, but what else do you have? We have a sandwich shop. We have this farm market. We do traveling markets in Pittsburgh five days a week. We also have a donut shop that's year round. Uh, we raise honey. We do flowers. We do our own beef, pork, chicken, and all of our own fruits and vegetables. Is there something special about what you grow here or how you grow it compared to what people can buy in the grocery store? Um, we're after nutritional value and quality as opposed to a lot of the industry farms that are after shelf stable and um, high profit margins. So you will taste the difference in a locally grown um, and trust in the farmer, getting to know your, your farmer. When you get to know my brothers and my mom, uh, the passion, it's contagious. Now what don't you do that most f other farmers do? We don't use any chemical fertilizers on, uh, when we raise our produce. Um, that's one of the advantages of not monocropping. So if we, if we just grew corn every year or lettuce, uh, we'd have to make up for what nature does for you. Uh, we rotate our crops, so one year it's in tomatoes and one year it might be in hay with um, the animals grazing and collecting solar energy and um, everything contributes to the soil. A good farmer uh, raises good compost and raises good soil and is really a worm farmer at heart. So if you don't rotate the crops and use different, uh, different crops w in that soil, it, it, it somehow deteriorates the soil? Oh, absolutely. You know, different plants need different things from the soil. So that's why you need to be, be diversified because they all contribute in some way too. So, you know, the, the um, hay collects the solar energy. It turns sunlight and um, water and minerals out of the soil into carbon. And the carbon is what the worms eat and they fertilize the ground and that's what we can plant tomatoes and peppers in and, and not need chemical fertilizers. You use no chemical fertilizers at all? Exactly. And what about uh, the, the, the bugs? I know they use insecticides in many farms to get rid of some of the bugs. What do you do? It depends on what it is. Uh, most of our vegetables were able to be chemical free. Um, some fruits need to be sprayed for stuff that we can't really uh, do anything about. It's not stuff that's nurtured on our farm, like blight comes through the air. Um, you know, stink bugs, they say came from China. But uh, most of the things that we do, we try to use the chickens to eat the bugs and we try to do crop rotations. Um, there's certain bugs that don't like to be around certain herbs, so we plant those around our fruits and vegetables so that we can avoid using chemicals as much as possible. Do you raise your pork and your beef and your chickens any different method? Uh, absolutely. I mean, our customers will attest to the fact that the the product tastes 10 times better. An, an animal that is raised in sunlight, collecting vitamin D from the sun, is eating a diversified menu instead of just eating soybeans and corn. Um, it's just gonna taste better. Husbandry is more than just putting them in a cage and feeding them twice a day. Is it more expensive to do it that way? 
it's a lot harder. As you'll see when you talk to my brothers, Tim and Pete, they're hardworking boys. It's not always easier, but to us, it's always a higher quality product, and we're more proud to sell it to our customers. And what's been the customer reaction? I know you've been open since 2009. I'm sure it started slowly. What does it look like now? I mean, it's been amazing. We're really fortunate. Our customer base is very supportive. They return every week. Um, they vote with their dollars, and they're voting that they want more, and we keep trying to deliver. You have some kind of a system here where people can get foods on a regular basis. They pay a certain fee for a year. Would you explain that to us? Yeah, it's a CSA program. It's been around for a long time. It's a great thing for small farms. It's community supported agriculture and people that um, believe in their local farmer, they will um, pay for the season up front and that helps us with the cost of um, upfront costs that a farmer has in the spring and it allows us to uh, plan um, for a harvest. So we know that you're coming every week and we can pick it fresher. Some people out there remember the name Freedom Farms because they used to see you on a television program? Yes, we had four seasons of a reality show called Farm Kings and um, it came about because in 2009, we were starting from nothing and we were selling what we had. And what we had was a beautiful family with hardworking boys and a mother that really taught them how to have ethics and uh, love what they do. And it turned into a, a really awesome reality show. And the show was on for about four years, you say? Are you planning to do that again? Uh, you know, it really hijacked our life for two and a half years. So we kind of took a break for a year, but I think it'll be coming back. There's one other aspect that we haven't talked about. You've got a special event uh, on a regular basis where you invite people to actually eat some of the food that you prepare here. Yeah, I mean, entertainment's a big part of what we're doing. Agritourism is, is really the bread and butter of what's keeping small farms alive. Uh, people can come out to our dinners in the fields and eat with our family, and we'll cook a meal from the stuff that we grew right on our farm. We also make wine. We have local um, beer distributors. They're microbreweries that make beer. We also do a fall festival every October, every weekend in October. We do all kinds of stuff. Now, I understand that uh, your mom has a lot to do with preparing that food? Oh, absolutely. She raised 10 boys on uh, going to the grocery store maybe once a year. You know, we ate off the farm. And the funny thing is, is back then we thought we were really poor, but now I meet people every day that I feel are malnutritioned. <laughs> we ate like kings. Do you think that people are paying more attention to natural foods more so than maybe 10 years ago? Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge trending topic right now, and um, it's because there's less and less farms staying alive, and most of the food you buy in the grocery store is from industry farms. And um, our only suggestion to people is don't look for an easy answer to a hard question. We have a lot of uh, big problems wrong with our food system these days, and um, simple answers like organic in the grocery store are not the solution. Come out and meet your farmers. Find your local farm, and um, you're really going to love the relationship. Joe, some people want to know more about Freedom Farms. Uh, do you have a website? Absolutely. We have a website, freedomfarmspa.com, and you can buy our produce. We'll ship it if you're not close by, some of our jarred goods and our honey. Um, we also have our dinner in the fields, our CSAs, and you can read all about our everything we're doing on the farm on our social media, on our blog, and on our monthly magazine. Joe, thanks very much. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Lisa King is the mom to all the kids that work here at Freedom Farms. And Lisa, you have been in the farm business a long time, but not all your life. You weren't born a farm kid, were you? No, I was a city girl from Carrick. How did that um, lead to being a farmer? Well, I went to a farm market and I found my husband. And he was a farmer? And he was a farmer. Well, a long time has passed since then. And let's yes. go back to 2009, and that's when you and your sons and your family decided to start Freedom Farms. How did that come about? Well, we um, decided that we were going to continue farming. Um, they had a passion uh, for farming, and our logo is they were born to farm. And they love it? They love it. But this started in vitro. <laughs> like Peter says, he was practically born in the field, and that's very true. What would have happened if one or more of your children said they don't want any part of it? Well, actually, one or two have. Um, I have a son that is a doctor now, and I have a son that lives in the city, and he's a carpenter. So we have to accept that. Not everybody's going to stick to farming. 
What do you think is so different about this farm compared to the other one that you worked on before this? Well, raising all the kids in farming, I loved it. I have a passion for what I uh, do still today. Um, but they have taken it uh, a step beyond what I've given them. Their passion for growing all natural meats with no hormones, antibiotics, um, honey, raising honey right. Um, the whole goal is if you raise a healthy product, you have a healthy body. Today, we don't have healthy farming. Does the public go for it as much as you want them to? Um, beautifully enough, uh, everybody is picking up on this. They're realizing our foods aren't raised in a proper way to benefit our bodies. It's a fast-paced America. Whatever gets the product um, out there right away, um, we pick. You get fresh produ produce, excuse me, that, that very day. Um, our meats are butchered and frozen immediately to keep the freshness in the meat. We're happy to see that people are concerned about what they're putting in their mouths and what effect it has on their bodies. Lisa, there are many, many farms in western Pennsylvania and many here in Butler County. Do they all do what you do? Um, I would have to say I'd support any local farmer. It's the big commercial farmers you have to be afraid of. Um, I'll give you an example. They plant a product, and it's a large amount of product that is supplying the whole United States. Um, they plant something, they spray, it's on a schedule. They don't check the crop to see if there's something wrong. So by the time you get a commercial grown um, product, whether produce or meat, from a commercial large grower, it has been treated when it maybe is not necessary. That's the difference between a local farmer. And I would have to say my kids are very, very strong about that. So um, I'm really proud of them that they're giving that product to everybody, not just us. This store has been here since 2009. Are more people coming here than maybe a few years ago? Um, when we first opened, it was a struggle. No one knew where to find me um, and the children. And now it is becoming very well known, which is great. And old customers from our old farm market are coming back. But we have very strong supporters that are here every week and supporting us. Um, and everything that we do. So it's finally given us hope. You have um, monthly dinners, I think, at least during the summer. We, Tell us about that. We have three dinners monthly. It's growing and growing. It went from maybe 50, then 75, and last night we uh, served 240 people, um, which everybody asks, oh, isn't that a lot? But I love cooking for people, and I love to hear their reactions because they're tasting food that has not been processed. This is fresh chicken, this is fresh pork, this is fresh beef, this is our fresh vegetables. Um, and it's prepared with love and um, I, I love to see people's reactions when they taste good food. Can people really tell the difference? Can somebody who's never tried your beef before tell the difference? Absolutely. Um, I'll give you a, a short little story. I never ate hot dogs in my life. I would never eat a hot dog. And uh, we started producing our own hot dogs. Joe said, you have to try this. I've never eaten a hot dog. I will never eat a hot dog. Um, I ate one for breakfast. It was that good. <laughs> you could taste a difference even in our produce. Um, if you taste our broccoli compared to a store-bought broccoli, you are not tasting chemicals. You are tasting the goodness of broccoli, uh, carrots. There is a major difference difference. Um, when you try our roasted chicken, it's unbelievable. Um, educate yourself, I tell people. When you find out what you're getting from the store and what is in a chicken, for example, compared to what we have, there's no way you can't tell the difference. Well, it's, it's hard not to think that you don't believe in what you're doing, Lisa. Yes, we believe in what we're doing. It's very important. Uh, educate yourself. I'm sure you're going to hear that from my sons. It's an education. Quit living an American life that's too fast to believe what's going on. Support your local farmers. Um, they care for you. It's not just about money. Lisa, thank you. We want to get out to the field to meet some of the farmers awesome. out there awesome. where it's all happening. Thanks awesome. so much. Thank you.
Another member of the King family here at Freedom Farms is uh, Tim King, and Tim is in the produce section of the farm. But before we talk about that, let's talk about your growing up. I know you grew up on a farm. Do uh, you remember your first days on the farm, Tim? Yeah, I was born and raised on the farm. Um, it's kind of hard to remember my first experience, but I, I do remember starting uh, very young. Um, we were, as soon as we could help, we could. Um, we were carrying, you know, water uphill a mile, like most farmers say, uh, to take care of the animals, manure out the animals. As soon as we could help, we could, and that's that's the farm life. Well, when you got to school, uh, were there many other farm kids there? I grew up with a few farm kids. Uh, there's definitely becoming uh, fewer and fewer small family farms in this area. Um, we're seeing farms uh, being bought out uh, for developments. And uh, so I, I would say that the second generation of um, my family is seeing less and less uh, farm families. Here at Freedom Farms, I keep hearing a word, sustainability. And we've heard that word over the years. I'm not sure what it really means. Would you describe that for us? I think sustainability means something different uh, to anyone you would ask, but to us, it means that uh, we want to develop our soils to be as nutritiously dense as they can be, so they will generate healthy food, uh, and therefore, uh, we'll have healthy people. Um, your body fuels your mind, and uh, if you're feeding yourself really good food, um, we're going to have smart, productive people in this country. But sustainability means a certain kind of end result. Can we tell the difference? Can I tell the difference between what you grow and what I pick up at the supermarket? Uh, you may have uh, a little bit of a hard time seeing the difference, uh, just seeing the difference, but tasting the difference. Uh, there's, there's a big difference in taste. Uh, there's a big difference in how you feel. You know, if, if you're eating good food on a daily basis, you're going to notice the difference between our food, which is nutritiously dense, and food that's come maybe from the other side of the world or, or this country. Uh, it's had to travel a long way, and it's probably been grown uh, with less sustainable practices on, le on less nutrient-dense soils. How do you convince people that maybe the food that you're growing here at Freedom Farms, this sustainability pro project of yours, uh, is, is better for them and even tastes better? Uh, well, we're, we're just talking to anybody that we can. We're uh, asking them to come out and see the farm. Uh, we do farm camps. We do uh, dinners in the field. We have different events. We want to show people, and we also cook the food. And, you know, they can come out and enjoy the farm, have a good meal, taste the difference of our food compared to a commercially grown uh, vegetable or, or meat. So when they do come out here to one of your dinners, and I know you get hundreds of people out, out here at this very spot, uh, after they, they try this kind of food for the first time, do you get many comments from them? We feel uh, there's a lot of excitement. You know, when people come out here and they see what it takes to grow these vegetables and raise the meats that we do and, and get to try them for themselves and taste the difference, I, I think that people are really excited about it. And I think the best advertisement is still word of mouth. You know, if we get a few people out there uh, talking to other people, hopefully it'll multiply and, and this, this will start to trend, you know, and become something bigger than it already is. You've got a program out here, Tim, called uh, CSA. What does that stand for and what is the program? CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture and it's a way that people can invest in their local farmer. Um, we have different programs where people can buy uh, shares of produce or um, dairy which would be cheese or milk. Um, there's eggs also. There's a flour share. There's a donut share. We have uh, jarred shares. So it's a way for people to invest at the beginning of the year when farmers don't have a lot of income at the time and they're trying to get startup funds to buy their seeds and uh, all the, f the fuel that they use and, and any sort of supply that we need to um, produce what we do on a yearly basis. So when they come here once a month or once every couple of weeks, what will they pick up? Typically, our shares are weekly. 
uh, and they can get it at drop points where we have um, one at the farm market, but we also have uh, multiple multiple different drop points in the city. Uh, they can pick up, uh, you know, anything from asparagus to zucchini if they have a produce share. Uh, when it comes to meat, it could be uh, chicken, uh, pork, or beef uh, that's raised on our farm. Um, or they can pick up a, a beautiful bouquet of my mom's flowers that she picked that morning. The whole family's involved here. Uh, I, I shouldn't ask this question, but I will, Tim. Do you all get along since you're so close together every single day? Uh, we're just like any other family. Uh, we'll butt heads. It, it, it's going to happen. Uh, but we stick together. Uh, we all love each other. We work really hard, and our passion is what unites us. We all love uh, farming, and uh, we all love each other. Do you see in the next five or ten years any changes in some of the methods that you use and maybe the, some of the directions that you're taking? There's always ways uh, to improve uh, our methods, and we always, we always try yearly to either try new varieties or uh, take different approaches to raise uh, a vegetable or, or raise an animal. Um, we're just trying to do things as naturally as possible, as healthy as possible, and that's our, that's our goal all the time. So there, there's new things that come up, uh, uh, new research that comes up that maybe we want to try and, and maybe improve uh, the quality of our products. So you're not always doing the same thing all the time, the same way you did 10 years ago or, or your family before you did it 20 years ago. You're always looking for new ways. What's the source of that information? A, a lot of our methods came from other farmers, uh, but I also do research. Um, I also learn a lot from my own mistakes. Uh, over the years, uh, we've had the chance uh, to make a lot of mistakes and yeah, we just won't repeat those uh, certain mistakes and improve off of that. But uh, we have dramatically changed in our growing methods from 10 years ago. Uh, we, we've reduced the amount of uh, synthetic and chemically engineered fertilizers that we use. We've uh, dramatically reduced the amount of pesticides that we use. We're trying to copy uh, natural practices uh, um, and, and use cover cropping and pest management and uh, a good crop rotation to grow the best quality product that we can. Freedom Farms. Tim, thanks a lot. Good to talk to you. Uh, thank you. Now let's meet another King brother. He is Pete King, and he's in charge of the livestock here at uh, Freedom Farms. Now, behind us are obviously livestock <laughs> yeah these are uh, Tell, what, what do we have here these are uh brood cows we got calf and cow pairs there's about 20 brood cows there right now pete what's what's so special about what you do with with your cattle down here the way that we raise the cattle that's what's so important and special about it it's intensive grace so what we do is we just mimic the animal's natural behavior they're constantly on the move do you feed them any differently uh, very differently from the conventional methods, I think, that are used today. These are grass-fed cattle here. We don't feed them any grain. They're intensive graze. We just constantly put them on really palatable forage. What does that do to the taste? Obviously, when somebody's buying a steak or buying a piece of meat of some kind in the store or at the farmer's market, your farmer's market, they're looking for something that tastes better. Does the way you feed this cattle, these cattle, uh, uh, Absolutely. Make them make them taste better. Absolutely, there's a huge difference. Um, quality, it's a higher quality. We're no hormones, no antibiotics. I don't give these cattle anything but fresh forage uh, regularly, if not daily, and uh, kelp meal. That's their supplement they get. Um, but the quality of the meat is much higher in that fact because it's all natural. It's grass-fed beef, which most people aren't really accustomed to, and you have to explain to them what it is because we raise it different so that means it is an actual different animal it's going to be a different cut is there any way to describe why it tastes differently well these cattle don't raise out in a year it's about a year and a half to two years to get them to finish weight whereas a completely grain-fed animal will get to uh, weight in about a year so it's a lot less it's a leaner meat just to put it short, it's leaner, less fatty. You know. Okay, so the secret is feeding the, the beef. Now, what about the pork and the chickens? The pork, well, the pork we raise in our woodlots. They're all natural pork. We, we rotate them 
uh, about monthly, whereas opposed to the cow, it's more frequently. But um, and they're able to get natural forage. We don't give them any extra supplement. They're able to find all supplement, natural protein, and green material, which is huge for the health of the animal. Uh, we, we keep hearing a term uh, free range that's supposed to make a big difference. Uh, why does it make a difference? Uh, it makes a big difference because the animal is able to uh, utilize food, natural food, in its surroundings. They're able to pick and scratch. A chicken knows better what it needs to eat than you actually do. On top of the grain you give them, they're able to forage for bugs, grass, little microorganisms that only their uh, sharp eyes can see, you know. So, and all these things make a healthier animal. Having chlorophyll in the diet, being having access to green material um, makes a healthier animal. They're just like us. We need to eat your greens. That's what keeps you healthy. Is it more expensive to, to grow crops this way, to rather to grow chickens or, or produce this way? It would be more difficult to, difficult to do on a commercial scale. What makes all this work is having the diversity in animals. Uh, the cattle are cut down the grass to a comfortable length for our chickens, and the chickens clean up after the cows, sanitize our paddocks. So we don't really ever have problems with, well, disease, you know. Keeps the stink down, but um, is it more expensive? That's, I would say, no, it's just more labor intense. When you started getting into the farm business when you were just a young kid, uh, was it something that you thought you always wanted to do the way you're doing it now? No, things change, you know. Um, we grew up on a produce farm, me and my, my, me and my siblings, um, and it was big, pretty big uh, production, and um, it's something I honestly wasn't really into. I always had a love for uh, animal husbandry. So, um, but I was told all the time growing up that's something that's not feasible. He can't make money doing that. Um, so yeah, it's definitely been a big change. I honestly wouldn't want to go into the way we used to raise uh, produce, which was chemical. This, this model actually builds the soil structure and helps the ground where, and puts organic matter back to the soil, whereas before we were just adding, you know, chemical fertilizer to make things grow and that just doesn't help the soil it's not the same thing. Freedom Farms seems to be growing you've been here since 2009 and it seems to be getting bigger and your 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 farmers market down on Route 8 seems to be doing better all the time what do you see in the future? Well I hope more more people catch on to what we're doing and we have more people interested in it you know we all, always can use an extra hand and I know there's people out there who are into this kind of stuff and into good quality food and um I think as a whole, we hope that there's a change in the food movement, the way we visualize our food. Like, to me, a steak is a real sacrifice, you know. I've seen the critter that, that this steak come off of, and it's uh, you have a real connection to your food. And it's a whole health benefit, too. This meat is just going to be anything raised local with good method is going to be a healthier quality meat for you. And the farmers need the help too. So, I mean, more people getting interested in it. We like to bring people out to the farm, show them what we're doing, and um, hopefully we can spark interest, especially in younger generations, because that's pretty important. Pete, thanks very much. This has been a very, very interesting afternoon for us. Thank you, sir. So we've learned some more about the food that we eat and the food chain and how it's produced and the kind of people that are behind Freedom Farms here in Valencia in southern Butler County. I'm Larry Berg. We'll see you next time on Faces and Places.